Welcome, I'm Verna Jo, Director of Spanish Fork Senior Citizen Centre. We've created this program in hopes that you'll find some enjoyment, maybe learn something new, and mostly to connect with you. Please sit back and enjoy. Change, hut. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hi, how are you? It's Shelley from Spring Gardens in Mapleton. I'm happy to see you. A couple of things I want to talk about before I get started. I just wanted to remind you that on the 13th, we will be here to do hand massages and do blood pressure checks. And so come early, we'll be here about quarter to 11. So we'd love to have you come over and get your hands massaged and get your blood pressure checked. And then also on the 14th, we're doing lunch and community bingo over at Spring Gardens in Mapleton. And so we'd love to have you come there. Come on over about 12 o'clock. We've had some of you come and it's always been a great time. So I look forward to seeing you there. Also, this month, I just want to talk to you a little bit about some of the crazy holidays that happen during the month of April. So you all are familiar with April Fools, of course, the first, and Easter is the ninth. But what some of the days you may not be familiar with is April 2nd is actually National Peanut Butter and Jelly Month. So you, as you, you may or may not like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. However, they do say the most favorite jelly is strawberry jelly. There's a huge debate about how you should slice your peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So I don't know, do you slice diagonally? Are you a triangular? Are you straight in the middle? Whatever you decide, it's up to you. Just enjoy a P, B, and J sandwich on the second. Let's move into another unusual day, which is actually April 10th. April 10th is National Safety Pin Day. Have you ever really thought about safety pins having a national day? I hadn't either. But apparently, the year was 1849. Inventor Walter Hunt was in debt. He owed $15 to a friend. He decided as a way to get out of debt was to invent something that he could sell. He came up with the safety pin. He wisely applied for and received the patent for this invention. The safety pin was much safer than a straight pin and quickly became popular. He sold them for a profit and later he sold the patent and received $400 for it. He paid his friend back and pocketed the remaining $385, which was a handsome amount at the time. So originally, interestingly enough, it was called the English pin. So, okay. And then we'll move into the last holiday I'm gonna highlight this month, which is April 12th. April 12th is National Licorice Day. So on this day, it's only fitting that you should enjoy some licorice. So when you come see us for hand massages, I have lots of different types of licorice. You can come and pick up your favorite flavor. So, Want to share a little bit about licorice with you. Um, licorice is actually an herb and it's been used in foods medicinally since ancient times. It was even found in King Tut's tomb. Um, licorice has been in many things including tea, foods, desserts, alcohol and tobacco products. You can even find licorice in some cosmetics. Since ancient times, it has been used to treat a wide range of ailments. Um, it has been used as a natural laxative to relieve menstrual cramps and the discomfort of menopause. It also has been used to relieve pain and discomfort from ulcers, good for the adrenal gland and some cancer treatments. They even say it can lower the effect of aging on the brain. So, I don't know. If nothing else, it certainly tastes delicious. It's been fun talking with you today and I will see you soon. It's time for some jokes. Beverly, make us laugh. Okay. Well, I hope these make you laugh. We never know. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll start with these. When a three-year-old opened a birthday gift from his grandmother, he discovered a water pistol. He squealed with delight and headed for the nearest sink. His mother was not so pleased. She turned to Grandma and said, I'm surprised at you. Don't you remember how we used to drive you crazy with water guns? Grandma smiled and then replied, 
I remember. <laughs> yeah, getting back at grandma. <laughs> A young businessman had just started his own firm. He'd rented a beautiful office and had it furnished with antiques. Sitting there, he saw a man come into the outer office. Wishing to appear busy, the businessman picked up the phone and started to pretend he had a big deal working. He threw huge figures around and made great comments and commitments. Finally, he hung up and asked the visitor, can I help you? The man said, sure, I've come to install the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Well, Joe was sitting at a bar, staring at his drink when a large troublemaking biker steps up next to him, grabs his drink, gulps it down in one swig, and menacingly says, thanks, mister. What you gonna do about it? Oh no! Joe What's burst. Joe do? Well, Joe burst into tears. Oh, poor Joe! Come on, man. The biker says, "I didn't think you'd cry. <laughs> I can't stand to see a man crying. What's your problem?" This is the worst day of my life, Joe says. I'm a complete failure. I was late to a meeting, and my boss fired me. Then I went to the parking lot. I found my car had been stolen, and I don't have insurance on it. I left my wallet in the cab I took home. I found a note that my wife has left me, and then my dog bit me. So I came to this bar to work up the courage to put an end to it all. I buy a drink, drop a capsule in it, and sit here watching the poison <laughs> dissolve. Then you show up and grab it and drink the whole thing. But enough about me. How's your day going? The phone rings. This is Medicare uh, coverage in a nutshell. The phone rings and the lady of the house answers. Hello, Mrs. Sanders, please. Speaking. Mrs. Sanders, this is Dr. Jones at St. Agnes Laboratory. When your doctor sent your husband's biopsy to the lab yesterday, a biopsy from another Mr. Sanders arrived as well, and we are now uncertain which one is your husband's. Frankly, the results are either bad or terrible. What do you mean, Mrs. Sanders asked nervously. Well, one of the specimens tested positive for Alzheimer's, and the other one tested positive for AIDS. We can't tell which is your husband's. That's dreadful. Can't you do the test again, questioned Mrs. Sanders. Normally we can, but Medicare will only pay for these expensive tests once. Well, what am I supposed to do now? The people at Medicare recommend that you drop your husband off somewhere in the middle of town. If he finds his way home, don't kiss him. <laughs> Did you get that, Pete? Yeah, I got that. Okay, yeah. okay. I'm glad you got it. Yeah. Okay, do you want to? gets lost. Well, you hope he gets lost. Yeah. He has Alzheimer's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, tell us one more. Okay. A man runs into the vet's office carrying his dog, screaming for help. The vet rushes him back to an examination room and has him put his dog down on the examination table. The vet examines the still, limp body and after a few moments tells the man that his dog, regrettably, is dead. Mm -hmm. The man, clearly agitated and not willing to accept this, demands a second opinion. The vet goes into the back room and comes out with a cat and puts the cat down next to the dog's body. The cat sniffs the body, walks from head to tail, poking and sniffing the dog's body, and finally looks at the vet and meows. The vet looks at the man and says, I'm sorry, but the cat thinks that your dog is dead too. The man is still unable to accept that his dog is dead, so the vet brings in a black laboratory retriever. The lab sniffs the body, walks from head to tail, and finally looks at the vet and barks. The vet looks at the man and says, I'm sorry, but the lab thinks your dog is dead too. <laughs> the man finally resigned to the diagnosis, thanks the vet, and asks how much he owes. The vet answers, $650. 
$650 to tell me my dog is dead, exclaims the man. Well, the vet replies, I would have only charged you $50 for my initial diagnosis. The additional $600 was for the CAT scan and the lab test. Oh, the CAT scan <laughs> and the lab test. Yeah, very good, everything. Thank okay, you. great. Ah. Good morning. Hope all of you are well. We have reflections of a farm boy, and we're going to read about some things, the stories of growing up on a farm where they farmed with horses. And my husband grew up in this farm in Idaho Falls, and it is now, uh, interestingly enough, a wedding reception place. <laughs> it's called The Barn on East First, and it's still there. But it was a huge, big barn. But these are the stories of what went on in that barn and what went on on that farm. The first one today is Ma Pig and her piglets. You know, we're getting into the time when we start having the babies come soon here. So this is where we go. It says, can you see a big fat mama pig, a sow, laying out flat in a pen of straw and seemingly paying no attention while nine or 10 piglets squeal, root and climb over one another, each vying, vying for the best faucet. Yes, there's always one that can't quite get in there and keeps being pushed off the end of the, of the teat row. The piglet at the end is called a runt and is smaller than the others, not to worry as runts usually grow to be normal after a while. Mother Pig enjoys little babies because she usually has a grin on her face while feeding. She's sometimes so relaxed that she can go to sleep during all the ruckus. The piglets seem to understand Ma as they are obedient to a commanding low grunt. They seem to mind better than people babies. Never do you see a Ma Pig bite her babies. Having said that, sometimes the mother pig might lay on her baby, but not on purpose. Laying on a baby happens quite often, but rarely results in death. The babies just do a lot of squealing and mother adjusts her 300 pounds of weight. Now baby pigs are cute and friendly, so, that you, so you can even hold them. At first they squeal and grunt a lot, but later they learn to snuggle down and enjoy their human friend especially if their friend's a little boy that has time to play with them. At best, piglets long to be scratched behind the ears and do, have tummy, and do like to have tummy rubs. Ma Pig will be your friend for life if you'll only scratch her back. Pigs and dogs are the smartest animals in the barnyard. They keep themselves clean and dry if allowed to do so. And pigs do potty over in the corner for the farmer to clean it out. Pigs are faithful and make good pets, but are always trying to eat something. Let one in the garden and what he doesn't eat, he will root out. A pig has a flat, muscular nose that loves to dig. Razorback cousins live in the woods and forest, spending their time eating acorns, tender roots, and undergrub, underground grubs for, or worms. By the way, little pigs come with several sharp teeth that grow into tusks like their wild hog cousins. These tusks can be downright dangerous, so the farmer breaks them off as soon after birth so they never develop. Ever bend over into the pig and talk to a pig? Ever bend over into a pen and talk to a pig? First, you need to get their attention because their first and foremost interest in life is food. If you get their attention, just grunt and soon you'll hear a grunt back. Then try grunting twice and three times, and soon it's possible to have communication. Please don't assume you can communicate thoughts, but rather grunts. Yes, they know who to trust, respect, and who can get them something to eat. Now, you need to go ask your mother if she could remain cool if she gave birth to 20 or 25 babies a year. Ouch. That one hurt. Our next story is called The Runaway Team. Now this is a funny one. In those days we put up hay from the field by hand. By hand I mean the hay was mowed by horse-drawn mowers to cut the alfalfa in five-foot swaths and after a day or so of drying was rowed and tip-raked into piles about two feet high. 
A Hoover wagon, do you know what that is? That's a flatbed wagon drawn by horses. It's a Hoover wagon pulled by horses, was slow, slowly driven up between the rows of the hay piles, while a man on each side pitched the hay onto the wagon. There was a man in on the load to replace the piles to obtain the maximum load size. Things went easier and faster if you had a low cost or free driver. These low value drivers were usually kids and I was the kid. I left the farmstead gate and drove the empty wagon to the end of our half mile field where the loading crew was waiting. To be trusted with such a task made one feel very important and just like a grown up. It was important to keep the wagon speed not too fast, but not too slow, as the hay pitcher could only work so fast. A good time efficient job had to be done. At last I had arrived and turned the horses around into the new row of hay piles. Meanwhile, back at the yard, the hay was hoisted by Derrick's into a large haystacks. Uncle Emery had left his wagon and team astride the gate opening. Now at the end of the field, a problem developed. The horses, for some reason, lunged out for a good old fashioned runaway. Away the team ran. Flew up the field with the empty wagon bouncing up and down and sideways making an awful racket. The more the noise, the more it scared the team. And they, they became more frightened. Having lost the reins, I managed to cling on to the headboard while flying up and down. Here came the gate entrance with uncle's team and wagon astride. All of a sudden, everything flew everywhere with myself hanging on, but in midair. Can't remember the details, but saw the team leap into the air like deer following, followed by an airborne wagon and a little boy. The horses stopped, the wagon stopped, and I stopped, enclosed within the haystack yard. Everything was so fast and traumatic that I forgot to cry but just sat on a clump of hay and shook. Strange things happen on the farm, and this would always be a mystery. Yes, uncle's team and wagon was still astride the gate opening with the horses in place. The stacking crew stood around, scratching their heads, wondering how such a thing could happen. It had to be so, one team and wagon jumping another. Looking over the situation, everyone agreed that it was impossible. Can you imagine that? My heaven. Ah, here's one you're going to love. Now, in the barn, on one side they would have the cows, and on the other side they'd have the horses. Now, the story goes, this is called plastered with green. Now, sometime in the past, the inside barn walls were painted white. The barn walls were painted white. You'll have to believe me. At least on the horse's side, they're still white, sort of. On the cow's side, the walls were speckled with green, turned brown in some places, sometimes washed off with a pressure hose, but not scrubbed. Can't tell you the crux of the story without a foundation explanation. I'm going to ramble on, but we'll be back as soon as the cows are out of the alfalfa pasture. Alfalfa, or lucerne, came from the old country. It's a legume with a high content of protein. It's succulent and grows well in Idaho. Alfalfa is grown for hay in its dry form and a cow laxative in its green form. The secret of high milk production is to get a cow to eat fresh alfalfa without bloating to death. To keep cows from bloating on alfalfa, we would feed dry hay in the morning while they were hungry before turning them into sectioned alfalfa field. After eating some dry hay, we would turn them into a section to eat the stems left over from the previous day. About noon, we'd turn them into a new section of lush alfalfa. About five in the afternoon, a cheap labor person me, 
would bring the cows to the barn for milking. The cows had popped out tummies and happy grins on their faces. A few of the most greedy looked downright miserable. Milk would squirt from side to side with full-breasted cows' teats while walking up the trail to the milk barn. Milking was fun, sometimes. Well, mostly, since we had a newfangled milk machine and didn't have to squeeze it out of them. The trick was to wash off the breasts and teats without getting squashed, and the vacuum suckers on get them on without getting kicked. And then there was usually a few minutes to stand and wait. Well, let's get back to the white and green barn wall. Cows think it's neat to do their tail lifting, you know what that is? While waiting or being milked. The alfalfa, such as it was, created gas, and gas creates pressure. And when the tails are lifted, sometimes the walls get green. One evening while helping Grandpa's, Gramps milk, I stood directly behind a cow. Gramps said something, and I turned my head but just for a moment. I turned back only to see a big fat cow pointer to tail right at me. Too late. An explosion took place and I was plastered. Plastered with green from head to toe. <laughs> As my mouth gaped open and two eyes popped out, I was plastered green everywhere except the wall. <laughs> the things that happen on a farm. Yeah. Now the next one here is one that all of you are going to relate to because it's talking about a 13-year-old. This is called hanging the gate. 13-year-olds are teenagers. <laughs> Boy, are they. Sometimes teenagers are not too bright. Now, parents and guardians often wonder if their teenager will even survive, either mentally or physically. I was no exception. Grandfather and I had just made this big plank gate between the farmstead and the field. A large post was sunk, and gate irons were screwed into the post in preparation to hang the gate. Now, Grandpa said, you balance this gate while I lift it onto the post hinges. Be careful that it doesn't lean or it will fall, said Grandpa. This is not a biggie, because all I had to do was balance while he did all the lifting. Piece of cake. The space between the planks intrigued me, and I wondered if I could get my head between them. Maybe I should try while performing this simple and boring feat of balancing the gate. Yep, I'll check this one out and see for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was right. <laughs> My head did fit through it as the gate became off balanced. The gate fell over and I went with it as my head was between the plank spacings. Whap on the ground with my head underneath and feet in the air. Now did the accident hinder my intellect? Don't know. Maybe the reader of these narratives can decide. I can tell you quite honestly, it did affect his, his thinking. I married him. I had to be nuts. I married a man with five boys, 16 through seven, and then had five more kids. But we sure had a great life. And part of that life was telling stories of growing up on a farm where they farmed with horses. This book is in the library here at the center, and it is to be one, it says desk copy, so you'll have to leave it there. But anytime you'd like to read some of these stories, you're welcome to come and read them. And I hope you enjoy them as much as Marion had fun writing them. He wrote these while I was in the hospital recovering from back surgery. And he would come each day, bring his little legal pad, and write one story a day. And that ended up in 93 short stories of growing up on a farm where they farmed with horses. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you like to read it. It'll bring back a lot of good memories to all of you. Have a good week. Hello. Hello.
we're some of the members of the Golden Age Services, and we've partnered with our awesome senior centers to bring you some great classes. So in Spanish Fork, for the seniors, we hold um, a bingo class. So on the first Friday of each month is the membership luncheon. And if you can stay after, we have a bunch of free prizes, and it's a lot of fun. And then we've been doing a new thing for our phone classes. That's the first Monday of each month. Whether you have an Android or an Apple, we're here to answer all your questions. I'm Blaine Edwards, and I do estate planning, and I'm a part of Golden Age Services. My name is Tracy Padgett. I'm with Realty Path, and I'm a senior residential specialist and help with real estate. I'm Dustin Lane with American Family Insurance in Mapleton, and we do life insurance and auto and home. I'm Jen Mobs. I work at Utah Avenue Insurance, and I do health insurance for families, individuals, and Medicare. My name is Miles Pitcher. I own Superior Lending. I'm a reverse mortgage specialist. I'm Daylene Higgins with Elevate Finances. I am a daily money manager, and I help seniors with their personal finances. And I'm Judith Baker, and I'm with Custom Photo Utah, and I help people digitize all those photos sitting around in your closet. We hope that you will come, come join, join us. us. <laughs> We'd love to meet you. Well, welcome, welcome, and surprise, surprise. Today we're celebrating our Beverly Schofield. We love and adore her. This has been, a, this has been in the making for two or three months. Anyway, Beverly and her sweet husband, Pat, started coming into our senior center in 2012. When Beverly first started out volunteering here, she, star she started out serving lunch, researching articles and gathering information, writing and publishing our newsletter. And, and then she was doing announcements among the other variety of things that you've done. And then, uh, so then we saw all of your skills and strengths, so we asked you to be on our team, which was the wisest thing we ever chose. Give it up for Beverly. You know I love it. Pat and Beverly are the proud parents of 13 beautiful children. They're all here. grandchildren. And how do I know this? Because I waited to the last minute to ask Beverly so that I wouldn't give anything away. Anyway, Beverly, thank you for all that you've done. You know that we love you. Thank you. She really is the glue. She really is the glue that keeps the senior citizens coming together. So anyway, I'm going to present you with your clock. That's right, we get a clock. This is a tradition we do. A beautiful clock. And then, do you want me to take that down and put it down so you can go on with announcements? <laughs> sure. You know, actually, I told her, let me do announcements and you can do the jokes. But then I got to thinking, she's going to want to do all of this in front of her cute kids. Yeah, we are. Right? Just a few words about um, our mother, Beverly Schofield. Um, you know, we love her. She, <laughs> she's had, uh, there's 13 of us, thir 13 children. So she had 13 children in 19 years. 18 and a half. 18 and a half. That, that deserves a round of applause. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the manufacturing lines at Ford did better than she did, right? That's, that's pretty good. Pretty good throughput. And more than anything, very high yield. Look at the quality of this yield, right? 